and it's on. Um, hello, YouTube. Today, oh, let me get this camera steady. <laughs> Out of balancing on things for it to be the right height. Um, but soon later, there's going to be a better setup. I plan on it. So this video is going to be about a viewer suggested this video last year and I have not had the chance to get to it because I had a bunch of planets traveling through the 12th house and <laughs> you know how that works. You, you just have to give up things to the universe, really. Uh, but this video is going to be about Chiron in the eighth house. Now, uh, my son is in the eighth house and it's in very, very close quarters with Chiron. It's like, my son is like 16 or something degrees in Leo and Chiron's like 14 or 15 degrees. Some, something, I forget the, net, the, the actual exact degrees though, but it's in very close quarters, enough to almost claim a conjunction. So, now, the sun being in Leo is where the heart is. And Chiron is the the wounded healer of sorts. He, he heals selflessly. He heals um, in regards, because the mythological story of Chiron is... Uh, Basically, he pulled an arrow out of one of the other centaurs and poisoned himself uh, in turn. Chiron is also a keeper of the uh, <laughs> the Sagittarius's swine. <laughs> their liquor and alcohol and their, their intoxicants. I mean, the centaurs, um, which are different centaur planets too, besides Chiron. But Chiron's one of the centaurs. Um, <laughs> Keeper of wine. There, there have been times where I've definitely partied and uh, brought a lot of liquor. <laughs> I've gotten inebriated. Leo style. So <laughs> you know, Leo, we bring two handles. Two handles or nothing. <laughs> Bring your own booze. Okay, I'll bring the whole entire party. <laughs> but honestly, Karen's in the eighth house with me, and I'm Leo, so I'm talking about something very, very hidden. So my you, this, I'm gonna blow up <laughs> talking about this. <laughs> really, I'm gonna blow up live on camera. Uh, but my with my with my personal experiences with it, because people need to bring their personal experiences into um, astrology and into to these uh, experiences and actually allow people to... I'm looking at my um, tarot decks and I'm going to pull some tarot cards today. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> so... Chiron's a wounded healer, so I've dealt with a lot of um, a heartbreak. And the sub being in the eighth house is very transformative. So it's like it's like heartbreak, but it's mutual. It it has a it has a mutual deep healing element to it. It's 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 about expanding and growing and, and knowing oneself. But then it's like the destruction of that, the revival of that, and back again. Um, but it's also it's also a house of like uh, marriage and inheritance and things like that. And when 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 I say inheritance, it's like it's it's a different. Because I've seen other 8th house people and they're pretty lucky. It's a different kind of a luck than Jupiter. Um, it's more of... It's more of a... Uh, magnetic attraction. We... 
we govern ourselves with the law of attraction a little bit differently uh, in the eighth house because there's there's a little bit there's a little bit of a uh, luck involved, but it's also it's also magnetism. It's also being able to to let a vision be almost uh, steamy, <laughs> steamy and feel you know like. Mixing water and air together, emotions, with 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 a uh, <laughs> with a uh, thought and ideas and knowledge, and it's 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 letting it go. It's being practical about the utilization of your inner energies and where you want them to to go. But a lot of times, people can't return those energies, and that's what is the most fucking difficult. When people can't reciprocate, but then you've seen them and you know what they're capable of because you have all this eighth house energy, you can see right through them. You can say, you can say, okay, you can do this. It's right here. It's right next to you. Your your obstacle is next to you and it's doable, it's accomplishable. It's not a mountain, it is a pebble. Um, and some people just don't, don't, don't want to see it, don't want to realize it, don't want to accept it, and they procrastinate. Uh, they put aside, they, <laughs> they, uh, I'm thinking, they, um, what the fuck? I lost my thought. They lose their thoughts. <laughs> see, transformation right in the moment um but yeah they lose their thoughts um and i really don't like procrastination my my since my since i'm saying my son is in the eighth house that means my ascended is capricorn uh my ascended is capricorn so a lot of planets are going are going through my first house too so this is like a, it's like the it's like the calm before the storm, because uh, my Saturn return comes right after, <laughs> right after Saturn's in Capricorn, it goes into Aquarius, and that's my Saturn return. So, <laughs> so this stellium is is really starting. It's planting the seed in Capricorn, and it's and I'm gonna watch things just grow. So if you so if you guys are watching this and this is like your first video of mine talking about Karen the Eighth House, um, there's a lot uh, to be coming in this channel um, this coming year because I'm gonna be posting a lot more videos. I'm gonna be sharing my personality a lot more through media and through YouTube since all of these plants are out the fucking twelfth house. <laughs> well, a few more plants are going through the twelfth house. I'm gonna have Jupiter go through the twelfth house too uh, in a few in a year and a half or so. And Mars is going to go through, so I have a little, I have a, I have a, I have one more thing to go through in the fucking twelfth house for some fucking reason. Is that fucking Mars? Mars. <laughs> I'm a Leo, so I can yell at Mars <laughs> like that. <laughs> I can yell at my Mars like it's a goddamn general, <laughs> which is probably wrong, or maybe it's right. I don't know. I haven't thought. I haven't thought. You know. <laughs> I haven't thought about it, but well, it's the well. How I think about it is basically is, since it's the ruler of Aries, and then I kind of like Aries. Well, most of the time, <laughs> we want to express passion and love and stuff with to each other. But you know, fire signs want to be expressed and different. <laughs> oh, this video is so much fun so far. Um. I need to get right back on the camera, right back in front of people, because I love being in front of people. I love sharing my personality and everything. So, with um, Karen being the eighth house, it's a uh, why am I all fucking blur, very not a focus. With Karen being in the in the eighth house, uh, it's wounded transformation. Like let's let's think about it. Like let's think about wounded transformation. Let's mix up these words. Let's. I'm going to work my Mars and Gemini and 
my Saturn and Lilith and Aquarius and mix up these words so people understand what I'm talking about from different angles. <laughs> um, so where was I going with that? So with Chiron, so it's wounded transformation, imperfect transformation. It's like transformation that's like you transform, but you kind of reconsider. <laughs> or maybe that's just my Mercury being in retrograde too. I have a bunch of fucking planets in retrograde. I have Uranus. And Neptune and Capricorn retrograde. My Mercury is retrograde in the eighth house. My Saturn <laughs> is an Aquarius. And guess what? It's retrograde. <laughs> my Mars is normal, but my so I have a south node in Juno on it. So <laughs> I'm not normal. I'm just not normal. I'm not a normal person. <laughs> I can never be a normal person. And then my moon's in the fucking 12th house. So it's like, there's never a moment where someone can't be transparent to me. If I see something clearly, it is what it is. And people call me a know-it-all and people say I'm out of touch. Uh, and I say, totally, I totally know it all. I know enough. I know enough. And when I say I know enough, I know enough. <laughs> like I truly know enough sometimes like people could tell me less without lying I'll find out if it's a lie that's when I don't know enough I'll find out if it's a lie trust uh, even if it hurts me <laughs> which is um, let me get back into focus which is um, one of those things I heard the Leo King because I, I watch a bunch of different astrologers online. Um, and I have a bunch of favorite ones. So I watched Leo King. And he mentioned Chiron being kind of like Forrest Gump. And I thought about that. Forrest Gump heals. He had to heal his legs to begin with. He could walk right. He could think right. He had all these in handy capabilities. Handy capabilities. I don't want to be too offensive on a... YouTube, because if I said Henny, the other one, then, you know, the SJWs would get me. Which, you know, I don't really care about the SJWs. I can actually navigate that, all, all that language, and then some, and but still be offensive to them. So it's like, <laughs> hell if I do, hell if I don't. Oh, and also, if you want to read my shirt, it's uh, rule number one, I'm always right. Rule number two, if I'm wrong, refer back to rule number one. <laughs> I'm always right. I wore that know it all that know it all ass shirt for this specific video. And also recently an Aquarius boy called me a know it all and I was like, okay. So I like, you know, <laughs> self-awareness and I'm a know it all. Okay. How can I be a know it all and lack self-awareness? Dumb shit Aquarius. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> See, people, people need to people need to stop coming for me because I have a I have a very very strong mom. <laughs> so, that would just boop 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 boop. Then my higher planets being in Capricorn, you know, that's like the the Pantheon, you know, do 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 do, you know, with the retrograde Neptune and uh, Uranus together. People need to stop trying to correct me because I will flip the skip, turn around, flip it up, flip up around. And show you a new idea that you haven't seen before and show you that you're incorrect. And I've done that several hundred times. Especially with this whole Donald Trump thing, which I am a firm and advent supporter of his. For multiple reasons. He's doing his job and everything. But that's another story. Let me talk about Forrest Gump, though, and how that relates to Chiron in the 8th house. So, when the Leo King said that and how Forrest Gump, because he does all the healing he goes through the heartbreak. He goes to war. He goes to save another soldier in the middle of war. And you're like, what the hell are you doing, dude? And so on. And then he has this girl who has this abusive guy, Jenny, you know. 
And that's that's that. And I and I thought hard about that. I'm like, damn, that that that's like an allegory for my entire fucking life. <laughs> because I had to overcome a lot of things. My own shyness, me not being able to read, and me not being able to read on stage, me having an extreme anger at things because I didn't know how to handle handle it. Me being young and me still having those higher those retrograde planets, chaotic chaotic as a child like adults couldn't tell me jack shit and they still in higher authority still can't now like for some reason i i have the i have this thing with with authority um in agreeing with it and i'm kind of a a rebel in that sense and people are like like dennis you take yourself very seriously yes i do but sometimes i actually don't i'm very i'm very fucking silly like Fucking silly. Like, silly. I'm sillier than one of those blondes on YouTube. Ah. Oh, no, not not used to. <laughs> I know a blonde that I just love <laughs> on YouTube. So, <laughs> you know, one of the one of the, the old, the old ditzy ones. And now they can't even. And Star Wars girl was talking about this. I love Star Wars girl. Love you. Love you. <laughs> she was talking about this and how they just all ditzy, but. And I'm like, yeah, they are. I agree 100%. And I love real fucking people. I like, I like bluntness, brashness. I like the abrasive personalities for some reason. And that's another uh, trait of, of Chiron really being in the 8th house and <laughs> recovering. Because if someone says something that's going to insult me, I'm like, okay, well, fuck you too. And with the ice cream scoop on top. And people can't handle that. <laughs> so I could I could dish out whatever people dish to me easily. But sometimes healing can be a difficult art form to master. And sometimes it's a scorpionic house, you have to have that vengeance. <laughs> That vengeance. You gotta pop some fucking tires, bust out some goddamn windows, claim child support. <laughs> Get phones cut off. All kinds of petty work. Put in that petty work if you need your vengeance. And do it right. <laughs> See, I'm evil. I'm encouraging vengeance. But vengeance can be a healing thing, especially <laughs> with my fucking placement. Because I could have probably end up healing someone. <laughs> my vengeance, my raw anger and raw vengeance being in the eighth house, it could probably end up turning out hitting somebody and putting them on the right path to their fucking destiny. Like, that's the kind of shit that I deal with in life and I hope that the people who've dealt with me in my love life do have the best lives they can because they fucked up with me and the next chance I get I might fuck them over when I get the chance so because that is what I call reciprocation and reciprocation is all a part of love. And I hate when people can't reciprocate. So why would I not reciprocate that bullshit you put on me back on you? It's love, you see. And um, speaking of uh, <laughs> that form of love, recently Dola the Pilot Man put out the f that this year has the frequency number of four, which is pretty clever. And shout out to Dola the Pilot. I'm, I'm, I'm shouting a hella astrologer and shit. Um, <laughs> and everything. Because I, I, I like I like doing that, that, that firm research. I like listening. And I, I do retain knowledge very, very well. So he said the frequency number four. So that's like two partners. Group. It's like the group thinking for. It's like a group thinking for itself. But it's, it's coming in the form of love, but it's also coming in the form of two can be unity, but it can also be separation as well. And that's what you forget about the uh, 
the, the frequency of two. And when it get combined, when it combines with the four, this is my own thing. Nice. Uh, when it combines into four, it um does its own thing again, but just in a in kind of a a a little larger of a group. So the group could be united, the group can also be divided. Uh, it's a little it's a little more um, rocky in the transformation. But if you double four, it becomes eight again. And we're talking about the eighth house. So I'm gonna pull a few so recently I was gonna I'm I'm about to pull some tarot cards just cause. Recently, I found um, a very uh, brilliant book. Now, people don't give this respect in the astrology community, give a religion the respect it deserves in the astrology community. And I think that's a, a huge mistake because there's allegories in a book such as this that fit perfectly to a lot of the stuff that is today. And I found this uh, book recently. It was laying on the ground. It's... Um, Placed by the Gideon, or the Gideons, you know, Gideon's Holy Bible. And I randomly opened up a page, and it fell on to Judges. And Judges had an interesting uh, verse in it that I found particularly uh, interesting that fits this time. And it's, it's and Judges is talking about... Um, consumerism and over consuming and not being thankful for for where you're at and where you're standing and the the part that got me was it was uh oh no excuse me it wasn't judges it was actually ezekiel ezekiel 34 uh, Ezekiel 34, if you want to follow along, uh, if you have a Bible and you want to follow along, 18, Ezekiel 34, 18, is it too little for you to have eaten up the good pasture that you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pasture? And to have drunk of the clear waters that you must foul residue with your feet. 19. And as for my flock, they eat what you have trampled with your feet. And they drink what you have fouled with your feet. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, behold, I myself will judge between the fat and and the lean sheep. Now, why I bring this up is um, about fouling the waters of your own pasture on my pasture. And uh, or, I'm just, uh, uh, let me get that back. Let me rewind. So what it said was, basically, you're trading on pastures that my people and my sheep have to eat. So therefore, you're trampling on things and transforming things and modifying things in ways and, and harming my my sheep. And you're coming in now, you're coming to, you messed up where you're at, and you're coming to my waters, and you're coming to my to to my pasture, from your old pasture, your old way of thinking, and you're coming into my new way of thinking and being absolutely destructive. And I will judge the lean and fat sheep. And whatever sheep needs to be reared, I will rear. And that's what this Bible verse is saying. So, when what that means is, instead of a firm belief in God, um, what that means is, because God can, God is the over overlying reality of things. It's not, it's not a being. Well, it it is a, a being, but. It's everything, but it's everything, absolutely everything. 
absolutely everything. It's absolutely everything. Yeah, it's absolutely everything. Um, so what this means is the universe has its own mechanisms for individuals like this. And because when you go to all the way up to Ezekiel 29, at 3429, he says, I will raise up for them a garden of renown, and they shall no longer be consumed with hunger in the land, nor hear the shame of Gentiles anymore. So, that's judgment. That's discernment. That's the sermon of your peers. That's the sermon of your reality. That's how you treat and respect what's around you. That's how you like that. That's that. It, it's all in that. It's all in that verse. I see it all there. And describing what it is that I that I see sometimes is is definitely difficult um, with this. So let's go to thirty. Thus they shall know that I am the Lord, their God, am with them, and they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. So if you walk in the holy way, accept, accept what is truly around you and, and love and embody that and not trample and not and not search for greedily, God will reward you with what you need always when you have faith. And which which is amazing for me to actually have found this and to have opened up randomly because with all the plans going out of the 12th house for me and reading that, it's telling me that it's time to boss them. It's time to... to Manifest and attract, and finally accept. Someone pulls some tarot cards now. Pull some tarot cards right after reading a Bible verse. That's how I want to do it. And I will explain to God when I get to the pearly gates. And I'll explain to him in the moment, now, and forever. So let's, uh, Pop up with some. I'm gonna pull some angel tarot cards today um, by Dorian Virtue. Now, I saw a lot of shade on Dorian Virtue um, about her finding Christ and everything and finding Christianity. I'm like, that's important. Like, don't disregard her work because she wants to transform. What does her work mean to you? What does it embody to you? How do you express yourself through her work? Like. That that becomes beyond her now. When you create as a creator, your creation becomes beyond you. And sometimes you can create something so great it can destroy you like Dr. Frankenstein. Or it could uplift you like King Solomon. <laughs> so people need to um, look into that form and open up their minds when it comes to that healing. There's messages in the universe just for you. And if you can accept them and if you can navigate them, if you can accept uh, and if you can fully embody them as as an as a true message, then you're good to go. You're good to go. Let me place this down. I have a whole I have my whole ritual. I keep it in um I keep my cards wrapped up in a um one of my old uh, black leopard print shirts because I like the print. And I had a, um, and that's a call out to me to, to place them on. And I've done it and accepted that ever since. And yeah. So I'm going to do, what am I do? Um, 
Power Terror deck. I'm going to pull three cards. And these three cards will be for the past, the present, and the future of 2018. Um, and this channel. So this video will be a very, very powerful video. It's done when the moon, a new moon in, for Capricorn 2. This is like the new moon that people say, start everything, know where you want to go, dream big. The wish master is here. So I'm going to be pulling cards for that. And I'm going to also pull cards for all of my subscribers too because I have about 31 or 32 subscribers now and I'm so thankful and I'm going to start creating more and more content for you guys to get to know me as a personality and I'm going to be pulling more tarot cards too and I'm going to be sharing a lot more of my personality. I have a lot more music that I want to create. I have and share. I have um other little facets too to myself as well because the thing is like when whenever i don't know something and i see darkness i want to illuminate it with my son being in leo i want to know about it that's darkness i don't know i don't know what what's in that uh, i like treat darkness like a furball sometimes which is fucking dangerous but <laughs> but if anyone can get out of that it's a cat with nine lives right a cat with fucking nine lives should I say about myself? <laughs> I don't have nine fucking lives. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to do the pass from the top of the deck. Top of the deck. Pass. Middle of the deck will be the present. And the bottom of the deck will be the future. Ooh, that's special, right? <laughs> After shuffling. Okay, so for my past, I have King Ariel. Your plans are working out very well. Professional and financial success are... No, professional and financial success, using resources wisely. So that's very practical for me. And it says successful, stable, accomplished, and powerful. That describes me, and that's in the past phase. So that means I'm, I'm coming from a lot of stability on my own. Like the 12th house has slowed me down completely. And it as it forced me to ground myself and find a new power and new stability. One that isn't just from working my ass off and working hard. Um, since all of since Saturn is now in Capricorn, that means I can actually work hard and actually get what the fuck I pay for. Or get 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 the efforts I put in returned back to me. If I decide to put out the effort. Uh, for it, I can accomplish it, which is beautiful to have in the past phase. The present phase is the page Raphael. Gentle, loving, dreamy, open-hearted. A new emotional situation, messages regarding relationships or social invitations, great intuitive insight. So it seems like I'm going to have my social life open back up uh, and my love life open back up, finally. After being fucked over so many fucking times, <laughs> and this is very magical. I'm doing a reading for my for, for myself, which is probably too. This is probably the most conceited fucking thing ever, but I'm channeling a little bit. So, which is beautiful is the page of Raphael. It's beautiful to have in the in the present circumstance. Uh, I definitely love would love to be a lover again and do all the romantic things. And not be bitter as fuck. But we'll see what the universe gives me. <laughs> in the future in the future circumstance is the ace of Gabriel. Ooh. A gift of passion, opportunity, inspiration, the chance to do something amazing, a sense of wonder. What I was just I was just I was just wondering. You know, <laughs> it's literally the cards, like I was just wondering. And look what showed up. The the ace of Gabriel. She's free with all of her wings. She has a mountain range in her background. She has a wand. 
that can transform whatever situation she wants. She's on green pasture and a beautiful, nice lake. Weren't we just talking about a green pasture just a second ago in the Bible? We were, weren't we? And I was talking about a green pasture that I wanted to be at. So in this in the future phase, that's nice to have. <laughs> Very nice to have indeed. So now this is now I'm gonna put these two cards back. I'm gonna actually uh, withdraw draw cards for uh, all my subscribers. Power hair cards. Or no, here's I'm not gonna pull the power hair cards because those are very these are very very exact. But I will pull out another Dorian Virtue deck. And these are the, uh, what's the name of them? I forget the name of these ones. Um, hold on one moment. These are her Archangel Oracle cards. And I like these cards a lot. These cards are... Um, Tools of of deep, deep inspiration. Um, so let's um. Oh, which one fell out? This one fell out. So the card I'm gonna pull out another one. I'm just channeling this. These these cards have me free channeling like this is like that deck for me <laughs> okay whoa i picked up four cards so these are the four cards that have fallen out and these are the this is the message that the archangels want me to give my subscribers for this year Sensitivity. You are extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now. Honor yourself and feelings. So some of you out there might be sensitive. Uh, just make sure to really ground yourself and uh, keep an open mind. And sensitivity is really the beginning of healing, actually. It's the it's the first step to to fully healing and fully finding what it what it is what what step it's the fundamental like I feel like when when that person when the person can find that point to where they start healing that is a point to where they can keep healing and keep finding other places to heal so look look at where you're sensitive and turn those sensitivities into into strengths because whatever is sensitive whatever is weak can get strong uh, always with faith it can get strong and with me i have a personal story like i told you how i couldn't really even read and i started reading on stage yet i used to read poetry at open mics but before then I struggled in school to actually just read and do all that, read and write and all that. But when I actually put work towards it in that sensitive area, it strengthened. And I know when you put, I know, I know for a fact when you put your mind on something, you can definitely accomplish it, and you can go above and beyond too. Um, the next card is comfort. Uh, Archangel Azrael, I am with you in your time of need, helping your heart heal. So that's a message for, for all of us, actually. Um, so Archangel Azrael is here with us this year, and um, he's given us comfort. So remember, find you can retreat to things that make you um, comfortable sometimes when you are working. Don't overwork yourself. Saturn is in Capricorn, so people will be in the mindset of of work, 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 work. 
But let's not forget, we do need comfort. Comfort does fuel a part of ourselves that is important for us to fully work and function fully as beings. Uh, the next card is breathe. Yes, <laughs> breathe. Ar um, Archangel Raphael. Wow, that's deep. Um, Archangel <laughs> Raphael says breathe. Take several deep breaths. And exhale slowly to awaken your energy and to release the old patterns that might have held you back in the past. So remember, breath is very fundamental to life. And to live is a process of getting hurt and healed over again. So make sure to breathe because that is definitely fundamental uh, to the brain. Because the brain needs to be oxygenated, oxygenated to work fully and for you to fully be like aware and um people will have insane amounts of energy this year um but it depends some people will be going to sleep like since the psyllium and whoever has capricorn is like a 12th house will definitely be going to sleep um <laughs> Or whoever's going through a Capricorn, um, some people are going through um, going through Saturn returns uh, as well in Capricorn as well, which is interesting. Definitely interesting. To where you'll be uh, springboarding off into whatever your dreams are. That's what Saturn becomes like a. I think Saturn as a rings as like a racetrack for some reason and you have to keep on going around those tracks and that track is rocky as hell and you're navigating between all of those rocks but it's still a race you still have to get to where you need to go and some rocks are bigger bigger than others but make sure you breathe and you pace yourself uh in 2018 so that things are very very beneficial to you and that you can fundamentally Start relaxing and, and healing. So, and the last card is a healthy lifestyle. Now, a lot of people <laughs> are going to be starting healthy lifestyles, me, me, me too included. So don't. So when I shrink up, don't be asking me if I'm on crack or something. <laughs> For all my black folk out there, they could be like, "This is doing crack." No, <laughs> never. Four twenty, maybe. Anything else? No, 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 never, 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 ever. Been there, done that. For sure, though. Been there, done that. <laughs> so Archangel Raphael comes up again. He says, have a healthy lifestyle. You can see this, uh, this is a lighter green, too, which is beautiful. Have a healthy lifestyle. Eat a healthful diet. Get adequate sleep and exercise regularly for optimal health. So if people want to lose weight this year, this is definitely the year to do it. It'll definitely take effort, but, and Saturn does make it tough, but when you put forth that effort, Saturn does repay you because you're helping to support his universe. So he has to pay you. Duh. <laughs> See, my side of being a retro, I shouldn't even tell people that's th those kinds of secrets. But, <laughs> um, yeah, all of our lights get sucked in to the rings of Saturn. Projecting from this planet, he sees it all. But, <laughs> uh, Kronos is represented by Saturn, too, which is time. So putting in time and effort to your health, um, to eating, to being mindful, um, will definitely benefit everyone of my subscribers in 2018. And I would like to thank you all for watching this long, crazy, silly video. And now let me show you all these cards for y'all before I say goodbye. So these are all of them.
all these angels are with you, especially Raphael. Raphael's really coming through this year. And um, I think my um, my astrology, someone was um, relating a lot of the um, the fixed points um, and the stars to Archangel energy. Um, and my Venus is on uh, Regulus, and that I think represents Archangel Raphael, if memory serves me right. I might be wrong, um, but I need to start doing more deeper research into these Archangel um, energies, or I think I'm right. I think I'm right. <laughs> That's how fast I channel. <laughs> <laughs> which is um, special. So sensitivity, remember sensitivity and comfort and to breathe and to have a healthy lifestyle. Okay. So thank you, YouTube. Thank you for watching this long video. Um, and I hope to share more in the future. Thank you.